This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Fake of Follies by the Beginner Surgeons. This is a new series which I'm starting aimed at uh, analyzing a few of the common errors uh, done by the beginner fake surgeon. In this case, I'll be discussing the most common mistakes done by the beginner surgeon uh, which would result in an intraoperative iris prolapse. Now, this is an abnormal looking eye with an immature cataract which is about grade 2 plus and a well dilated pupil doesn't seem to be having any issue. The trainee surgeon is begun the surgery, the side port is made, the dye is being injected under the air bubble, so far so good. Now to irrigate the dye out, he is using the BSS to irrigate the dye out. At this stage you can see the amount of pressure which is developing inside the antechamber and the cornea becomes a little bit steamy and there is an iris prolapse at the wound. What does the surgeon do now? Well, he tries to reposit the iris a couple of times. So now he thinks of pushing the viscoelastic into the eye. He goes in and pushes viscoelastic into the eye. Again, the iris is prolapsing out to the side port. Now the surgeon is now planning to do the main incision because he is unable to push back that iris. He creates the incision. It's not right. And the iris starts to prolapse from the main incision as well. He goes in again with the visco cannula through the main incision and tries to pull back that iris from the right hand side port and he is unsuccessful and iris is just pouring out from both these incisions. Now this is a stage the surgery is not even started. Rexis has not even been done. Now so what caused the problem and what was the error in the way it was being managed? Now, if the iris is pouring out from both the incisions, how are we going to proceed with the surgery? I just like all the young surgeons to pause the video here, uh, write down what corrective measures would you take to continue with the surgery. Okay, I hope you've written down all the necessary points and let us try to analyze this. So, number one question, why did the iris prolapse out? Well, the answer is it was primarily because of overpressurizing the chamber. And the surgeon is trying to reposit back the iris in the same overpressurized state. The pressure in the chamber is still high and you're trying to push back the iris. It's not going to work. You're trying to use OVD again to put it into the anterior chamber. It is again going to raise the pressure. The iris is going to come out. So to counteract, you create another incision which unfortunately is very short with uh, no corneal tunnel as such. And because of this poor wound construction, the iris from the main incision also is prolapsing out. Now, how do we deal with this situation? So, first try to address the question why it is happening. Well, the answer we have discussed that it is because of overpressurization. There is more pressure inside the eye. Whenever we are dealing with such a situation, the first thing we need to do is reduce all the risks which can raise the pressure inside the eye. The first thing to do is loosen the speculum. Your speculum could be pressing the eye. Loosen the speculum. Number two, decompress the chamber so that the eye becomes soft. So I am going to use the second side port to decompress the chamber. Let out all the OVD which is there inside, let it come out. So once the eye becomes soft, that's the time when you can reposit the iris. When there is no positive pressure from within the eye, the iris would go back when reposited, not the other way around. When you have got positive pressure pushing everything out and that is the time when you try to push. We are not going to be successful in putting the iris back but we will be successful in shredding the iris. So lesson number one, address the cause. The cause in this case was an overpressurization. When you want to reposit the iris back, make the eyeball soft and then you try to push it. So the number two thing which I did here was to use some intracanal dilating agent like an phenocaine or an adrenaline which is going to improve the tone of the iris a bit and then it would help us in further prevention of the iris prolapse. Number three what we can do is put in a small dollop of a dispersive OVD just a little bit on the surface of the iris. A few seconds later, you'll be surprised that the iris would now start to behave well. And now we continue with the surgery. 
the FACO is completed, the lens is placed into the bag and the single tenon island suture is used to close the main incision which was not appropriately created. This is a similar case wherein the iris is prolapsing out and the young surgeon is trying to push it back, it doesn't work. Again, the basic concept is first loosen the speculum, it may be pushing the globe. Second would be decompress the chamber, press the posterior lip of the wound and uh, the visco is let out, the eye becomes soft and now is the time that the iris can be deposited back quite easily. This was one video where we just highlighted the principles to be used when trying to manage an intraoperative iris prolapse. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.